Hare, if you let these people run while you remain silent, Hinduism is gone. Yes, that is the topic of the next few videos, guys. So I have amazing content that I want to share and I'm going to split it in a few uh, videos. And uh, it's mainly about how the anti-Hindu forces enrich people against Hinduism, if that even makes sense. Uh, no, it does not. Because you cannot enrich somebody against Hinduism. Because Hinduism is all enriching. So if you, against, if you enrich somebody against something that is enriching, then you're not enriching them. Anyways. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Parmashivam. Um, so this video is a kind of a response. So I've heard uh, different arguments that people bring forward to justify um, how um, the Sangha or lineages or the Guru-Disciple relationship is basically a cult. And uh, yeah, anyways, that can go pretty far when you see the bigger picture, but let's leave it at that for now. And uh, th there's different arguments they bring forward to justify these allegations or these false claims um, about uh, a sampradaya or lineage or um, yes, basically Hinduism as a cult and the Nityananda Sangha included. So the first thought current I heard was about the disciple who engages with the Guru. They are taught to, um, to make, to put all the glory on the Guru. Means everything that happens in their life, any kind of miracle or auspicious happening that happens in their life, they are taught that it is because of their Guru, because of Swamiji that it is happening in their life. Uh, I'm going to speak from my perspective being a disciple of Swamiji, but this basically it goes for pretty much any guru disciple relationship and basically pretty much all lineages within, not pretty much all lineages within Hinduism. And so the disciple, every time something auspicious happens in his or her life, they will be offered gratitude and put it on the guru. Oh, it is because of the guru's grace, because of Swamiji's blessings that um, this auspicious thing happened. And these anti-Hindu forces, what they say is that actually it is not the Guru's grace. It is just a coincidence. And you are taught to put, to associate all the auspicious coincidences in your life to the Guru so that you can, you know, worship a man or a woman. Um, so that's basically, that's to summarize, that is their claim. Um, in this, so what I want to share in this video is this, this coincidence, this, this concept, it's not a principle, it's a concept. Concept of coincidence. The concept of coincidence is a concept anti-Hindu. And this is why, so this is the understanding I got and basically the cognition that I got by seeking into all this, uh, this narrative. Coincidences are not real. Nothing is coincidental in our life. We learn, Swamiji is teaching us, Hinduism teaches us that we manifest the reality we experience. When you believe in the concept of coincidence, you do not believe that you are responsible for the reality experienced. Swamiji is telling, many masters have, tell, have, have told in the past, and even Swamiji was telling a relationship he had with one of his gurus, and that guru, basically, Swamiji was in the cemetery in the Smashan, and, um, and it was at night, and he went with his guru, and then, I don't know, I think he was sharing, he was a little bit scared, and then the guru was saying, Oh, what's going on? And Swamiji um, shared something like, Oh, I don't know, are, are there, will there be ghosts? And I don't know, you know, it might be scary. And the Guru, the Guru basically answered by saying, Ghosts are nothing but a projection of your blind spots. And that's roughly what the Guru, that's a powerful cognition Swamiji's Guru gave him. And that just shows and reemphasizes that everything we experience in life is a projection of our inner space. 
And the purpose of Hinduism is to make you realize that you are consciousness. Consciousness is all-powerful, all-pervasive, all pervasive, and uh, it's pretty much everything. All the auspicious Ananta Kalyana Gunas, all the most auspicious attributes, qualities, is basically consciousness. Coincidence means that there is something beyond you which is making things happen, and you are not part of that. And that is a concept which is totally against Hinduism because Hinduism is all about oneness, Advaita. Experiencing the oneness, the space of oneness with all. And, and that is why coincidence is, is not real. If you believe in coincidences, then you do not take ownership into the reality you experience. And the problem with that, if you don't take ownership, you will not look in and dig deep into your inner space so that you can consciously realize and be aware of how you are creating what is happening in your life. We are creating so, we are creating everything, but so many things in our life we are creating we don't want, but yet we keep creating them. That is because we lack awareness in our inner space and we do not understand the science of manifestation. But whether we understand or not, or whether, you know, depending on how the depth of understanding we have about this science, the seeking towards the ultimate truth should be kept alive. If you feel that coincidences are there and you're okay, yeah, it's a coincidence. There's nothing to do about it. Then there's no more seeking. Then you will never realize why you manifested that in the first place. So when you constantly put the exaggeration on the Guru, Swamiji gave a satsang about that, or whenever you put uh, everything at the Guru's feet, it is his grace only, it is his blessing only, then you constantly keep the seeking alive. Um, yeah, there's other things I want to share, but I'll share in other videos. In this video, I just want to stick to the, the, the concept of um, coincidence. And making you believe in coincidences, it does not allow you to strengthen your feeling connection with the ultimate. Ultimately, Paramashiva is the, there's the manifested and unmanifest. Paramashiva, Guru, Guru Tattva. Guru Tattva means it is the unmanifest dimension of us, unknown dimension of us, which we do not understand nor know how to relate to initially. That is why we start to understand and relate to that unknown dimension of us by cherishing the Guru-Disciple relationship. If you stop cherishing the guru-disciple relationship, you will stop cherishing the relationship with you and the unknown. And you will remain powerless towards your unknown. And that is, the, that is why the purpose of guru-disciple relationship, uh, as my experience goes, is to remove that powerlessness so that you realize that, oh yes, <laughs> it is just me. But we don't understand how to relate to that. We don't even understand how to, we don't even grasp what it means. It needs a certain kind of tapas, it needs a certain kind of spiritual integrity, a certain kind of spiritual, dis yeah, spiritual integrity or tapas to, to start to develop the brain in such a way that you can grasp these things because these things are very subtle. It's not just like, it's not something that you just, you just, you know, you get. So that is why doing tapas and ultimately as the Guru Gita says, and if you don't know, check the channel, I have uploaded an English translation version of the Guru Gita and it's very powerful. And in the Guru Gita it says that basically the highest tapas that you can do, the highest penance or the highest um, kind of spiritual practice, uh, we don't like this word, but the kind of spiritual practice that uh, we can do is service to the Guru. So that is why this very concept of coincidence is a very selfish concept because in the concept of coincidence, there is something outside of you which is operating, which you do not know and you don't care about. You just remain within yourself and like, oh, okay, it's a coincidence. But it's just you sitting with you. It's just you being stuck within you. It's a very selfish uh, uh, concept. It's a very se selfish um, approach to existence. And that doesn't lead anywhere because selfishness is not the reality. You are not the reality. The reality is the oneness. And to experience the oneness, we need to experience 
that the world outside of us is a manifestation and a reflection of our inner space. We have to seek into that. We have to constantly contemplate, meditate, true on that reality as we live so that we start to gain experiences about this reality. It has to become our experience. And it, you know, it comes in glimpses, bits by bits, or sometimes it just happens and you get it, whatever. But you have to keep seeking towards it constantly until it becomes your only experience, because that is the only reality. So Hinduism is all about you realizing that you are Paramashiva, you are in the space of Paramashivoham, you are the super consciousness. And a concept of coincidence will never lead you to that, because the very concept of coincidence is rooted in duality, you and something else. But the concept of super of consciousness and the concept, uh, the principle, I should say, it's not a concept, it's not just a mental, Thing, it's actually a reality. The principle of, um, of manifesting your reality and the principle of oneness is real because it leads you to the experience of Paramashivoham, that non-duality. That is why, is Advaita. So that's what I want to share in this video. So the first thing I want to debunk, anybody who comes to you with the understanding of coincidence, you can discard them from your life. They have no relevant, their understanding of life the level of seeking they have is not, uh, is not what you seek, is not what you want, and it's against Hinduism. Because Hinduism is all about you realizing you are super consciousness. And such understandings, such as coincidences, will never make you realize you are, par you are super consciousness, you are Paramashiva. It will keep you in duality and make you continue to justify why I should remain um, unaware about the inner space I cherish and the reality that I create for myself and others, uh, or I should say for myself, uh, don't want to go too deep into that, but, uh, and then, and then, yeah. So these people, they're there, everybody has their own seeking, everybody's growing, but we should be aware that if people are coming forward with the principle of coincidences and tell you that you should not relate to your guru and you should not, you know, put everything on the deity or on the guru and feel that you are blessed or you have the grace of your guru or your Ishta Devata, uh, then uh, these people are highly working against Hinduism. And that is, um, and that is very important because we have, to, we have to speak. See, when these people, <laughs> I call them the shlapatas. Yes, that's not a word, it is a word I created. And uh, these shlapatas are basically people who just uh, shlapat, 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 shlapat. They talk, 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 but there's no substance in what they talk. It doesn't lead to any seeking. It doesn't empower. It doesn't enrich. It is just, you know, you, you pretty much have your own idea of what it, what it is or what kind of space people who just talk for the sake of talking cherish. So, um, and the problem is that these people, they talk, they shlapat all over the place and, you know, they present, they, they become the kind of the face, you know, they kind of attract so much attention and people might start to believe that they actually know what they're talking about and they're talking about Hinduism. So that is why I feel as Hindus, like we have to stand, we have to, you know, keep the seeking alive, share the seeking, inspire seeking in uh, the people with whom we live, inspire devotion, prayerfulness, seeking, all these high uh, principles which allows you to experience uh, Paramashivam experience and to realize what Hinduism is all about. So that's what I want to share in this video. Um, next video, I have another one. <laughs> no, I have few actually. I have five, six. Yeah, I've I've seen few videos and few concepts which are literally outrageous and con and 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 just totally anti-Hindu. And I wanted to share my uh, cognition about all these things. So yes, uh, Hindus. We have to stand, we have to talk. This tradition is the tradition which has the most depth. There is no tradition in the West which can explain anything about life because the depth is simply not there. That's what it is. So if you seek depth, Hinduism is the path. And Hinduism, I'll share that in another video, but Hinduism does not enforce uh, anything. It doesn't force anything on you. And I'll share why in another video. But even in this video, to a certain extent, um, it's all about seeking, of bringing awareness to the inner space and real and, and trying to understand these higher principles and how we are manifesting the reality we experience. 
So definitely at the beginning, we are a little bit shaken. We don't understand what does it mean, and that's fine. We just seek into it and more and more gets revealed as we engage into that contemplation, meditation, and seeking. So with this, um, I thank you all for supporting uh, this channel. Um, to, let's help to, uh, to bring Hinduism forward, uh, to stop the attacks on gurus, um, listen to Swamiji's satsang. Swamiji reveals amazing, powerful cognitions about sacred scriptures in Hinduism every day, 7.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. And uh, like to make this video more uh, vibrant and more active as per YouTube requirements so that more people can access it and listen to these sharings. Subscribe and uh, write a comment below, of course. If you actually, if you've seen, I actually, I like to find that. I actually enjoy seeing these, finding these, uh, these, uh, these thought currents which are not uh, right and just kind of identifying them and, and sharing my, uh, the realizations I had since I've been living this Hindu lifestyle uh, with Swamiji. And uh, so if you have such things, you put them in the comments below. And uh, with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityanandam. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda